You might be tempted to click away from this video based on what I'm about to say next, but please stick around for at least the next 30 seconds and hear me out. First up, Python and Excel does not replace Microsoft Excel charts. It doesn't. However, Python and Excel offers new and powerful data visualization, visual data analysis capabilities that are difficult or sometimes not possible to replicate using out-of-the-box Excel charts and visualizations. Now, I want to be crystal clear on this point. I love Microsoft Excel as a data visualization tool, so much so that I created an entire tutorial series here on my YouTube channel that teaches folks how to visually analyze data using Excel charts. And I'll put a card up here to that playlist in case you're interested in that. Now, I want to make sure that we're crystal clear on one point, though. As much as I love Excel as a visualization tool, it has limitations, and this is where Python and Excel comes into play. It provides you brand new, very powerful capabilities designed for any professional that wants to up their data analysis game. But I don't expect you to believe me. Why would you? So what I'd like to do is show you some of what I'm talking about in this video, so we're off to Excel. All right, here we are in trusty old Microsoft Excel, and I've got a Python and Excel data visualization right here for you to take a look at. And this visualization exemplifies one of the first things that makes Python and Excel so much of a game changer for folks that want to visually analyze data inside of Excel, and that's what's known as facets. Now, the easiest way to think about facets is you use multiple columns, say multiple columns in a table, and you use them to essentially create a collage, a collection of tiles, where each individual tile is a data visualization that is at the intersection of all the values of all the columns that you're using to facet the visualization. It's a bit abstract, so let's walk through this. So here we have a visualization that's been faceted using Python and Excel. This is using a built-in library that you get with Python and Excel called Seaborn. There'll be other libraries that are going to be coming out later on. I've been talking to Microsoft. Hopefully, they'll put another library in here, which is even better for data visualization than this. But this is what we have right now, which is pretty good. And what we can see here is I faceted three columns for this particular data set. And this is the same data set that I use in the playlist that I mentioned earlier. It's the famous Titanic data set. And what we can see here is the three columns are... P class. So this represents the class of ticket on the Titanic, first class, second class, or third class. You can see that here, first, second, and third. And over here, we have gender designation, female versus male. So that's the second feature, the second column that's in the visualization. And then lastly, we have the age of the passenger. So females based on age in third class would be this particular tile. And what we've got here is a series of histograms. And each histogram and each tile represents the intersection of these things, right? Third class female passengers, and here's a histogram of age. But notice what we've also got going on here. We've also color-coded the histograms based on whether or not the Titanic passenger perished or survived. So technically, we're having four columns from our table represented in this visualization. And in my playlist that I mentioned earlier, I do show how you can kind of do this sort of thing using pivot charts. But technically what ends up happening is that you can't really make histograms. You really can't facet them by as many columns simultaneously using pivot charts like you can with Python and Excel. So this is a great example of what you can do. And it provides a lot of insights, right? For example, we can see here that first class female passengers, basically irregardless of age, they all survived. Now compare that to third class males, and you can see basically across the board with all the blue, tall blue bars here, things weren't looking good for them in terms of survival. So this is what's really super powerful. When you do visual data analysis to craft new insights, you typically want to put as many columns as you can simultaneously in the visualization. Using the Python terminology, you want as many facets at the same time as you can, because that allows for you to see all the interactions, and it's more likely that you're going to see some interesting patterns and some interesting things pop to your eyeball. Let's take a look at another aspect of working with Python and Excel for data visualization, which is really, really cool. And that is you can quickly iterate on data visual visualizations. Because a lot of folks, when I talk to them about Python and Excel, they're like, mm, Dave, I don't really want to write code. I don't, I don't like writing code. And, and I get that. But the good news is, is that the code that you write to create these kinds of visualizations is highly reusable. And let me show you an example. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at this visualization instead. And notice what we have here. We have the same basic structure. We have a data visualization that's faceted. We have the P class column from our table, the sex column from our table. And now we have something different called the embarked. And what we can do here is we can see counts of the passengers in terms of who perished and who survived across the intersection of all three of these features. Now, what's really, really cool is that the code for this particular visualization is 
almost exactly the same as the last visualization. So literally all I did to create this visualization here was just take the Python code from the previous cell, copy and paste it into the new cell and just tweaked it a little bit. That's all you need to do. And then all of a sudden, bam, you're looking at different features faceted together, different type of visualization. It takes less than 60 seconds. And what I've found, quite frankly, is that once you get good, once you become quite proficient at using these technologies, this copy and paste reuse paradigm allows you to create visualizations far quicker than you can actually do in Excel, to be completely honest with you, even with pivot charts. And I love me a pivot chart, don't get me wrong. But when you start talking about more complicated visualizations with more interactions like this, there's you just can't be Python in Excel. It makes you super, super productive. And this shows us a different kind of chart. Before we saw a histogram, which is a way to look at numeric data. And here we're just looking at categorical data. Now, what's really cool too about using Python and Excel is that not only can you do fastening, but you can also do things pretty quickly and easily that are actually kind of a pain using out of the box Excel charts. So let me show you what I mean by that. What we're gonna look at here is a scatter plot. And you can make scatter plots in Microsoft Excel, no problem. Now, what you can do very easily in Microsoft Excel is create scatter plots like this, right? These little dots where you have a couple of columns that are numeric, right, on your Y and X axis, and then the intersection is a dot. Color coding these using another categorical column of data is kind of a pain in the butt, to be quite honest. In my tutorial series that I mentioned earlier, the cards up here, you can actually see a video where I show you how to do this in Excel, where how you can create a scatter plot and how you can color code the dots on the scatter plot. But it's kind of a manual process. Here, quick and easy, right? Once again, I copied and pasted code, just tweaked it a little bit, and then all of a sudden now I'm getting a different kind of visualization that provides different kinds of insights to me. So for example, what we can see here is something called the party size. This is how many people were traveling together on the Titanic and then the age. And then we can see the little dots here and then they're color coded blue for perished, orange for survived. And then we can see the intersection of things and it starts to allow us to see more of what's going on. For example, in general, what we can see here is that males in third class, those that survived tended to be traveling by themselves. And then we can also see over here that for third class females, that we see a greater concentration of blue with larger party sizes. So that's another really super powerful visualization that Python and Excel makes quite easy. Here's the thing too, not only do you get facets when you use Python and Excel, but you also get access to visualizations that Microsoft Excel just doesn't have. So let me show an example of that. What we're gonna look at here is what's known as a strip plot in the Seaborn library in Python and Excel. And a strip plot is a really, really excellent way of combining columns of data some of which are categorical and some of which are numeric. And for example, what you can see here is we're looking at where people got on the ship. That's what embarked means, where they got on the Titanic, whether they were third class, first class or second class passenger, whether they were male or female, and then their age. And then what we can do once again is color code the dots. And essentially what we can do is we can see how survivability was distributed across age based on not only maleness versus femaleness, but also the kind of ticket they had as well as where they embarked on the ship. And what we can see here is some more interesting stuff. But this is just one of many, many charts that you get with the Seaborn library in Python and Excel out of the box that allow you to visualize your data in new and interesting ways to craft insights. But I'm gonna show you one more, and that's what's known as a violin plot. So this is a violin plot, and a violin plot is akin to something known as a box plot. In the tutorial series, which is up here, I teach folks how to read and use box plots in out-of-the-box Excel, and they're very, very, they're very, very good. And some folks would argue that this violin plot is a much better representation. And what it's doing is it's kind of showing you the distribution of age values and essentially the bulbousness, right? right? Notice how these shapes are kind of bulbous. The bulbs tell you where the concentration of values are at. So for example, for those folks that survived in second class, notice that this tends to be a little bit more bulbous at lower age levels than compared to first class and third class even more so. We don't have time to talk about how you read them. I'll put a link down below in the description in case you want to learn more about violin plot. But this is just another example of all the different kinds of visualizations that you have at your disposal once you get into Python and Excel. And of course, we can facet violin plots. So let me show you one of those. So this is a faceted violin plot. We can drill in on the nature of what's going on with the age data vis-a-vis -vis intersections of gender and what class of ticket they had and what where they got on the ship. This is powerful stuff. I can't stress this enough. And this is not made up. This is actually the kinds of things that I actually do as an independent analytics and data science consultant. For example, when I'm gonna build a machine learning model for a client, one of the first things I do is start creating visualizations like this. This helps me understand what's going on in the data, what particular columns maybe I should include in my machine learning models, which I shouldn't, so on and so forth. So all I'm saying is that this 
stuff is for anybody, whether you're doing diagnostic analytics or whether you're doing predictive analytics, doesn't really matter. These are super powerful techniques and Python and Excel makes it dead simple to create all kinds of visualizations. I've only scratched the surface of what's possible in terms of visually analyzing your data using Python and Excel. So what I would like to do is expand this out to the entire community. So if you've got favorite Python data visualizations, tips or tricks, let us know in the comments below. Share it with the wider community. I think everyone would greatly appreciate that. So my next video, I wanna cover why you should not, should not use Python and Excel for data wrangling in 2024. Yeah, I know, kind of surprising, right? I'm sure Microsoft wouldn't want me to say this, but that is gonna be the subject of the next video. And when that video is ready, I'll put a tile for it on the screen. And in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll throw up another one of my Python and Excel videos. This video will show you how you can combine two machine learning techniques, clustering and predictive models together to analyze data and craft new insights. So until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.